Okay, right. Let me uh, go and create the Azure database. Azure database. Okay, right. Create the Azure database service. Let me select the uh, existing resource group. So at the time of creating the Azure database uh, workspace, we have the five tabs, basics, networking, encryption, tags, and review create. Let me give the mandatory steps here, right? If you see the star mark means it is a mandatory. It is a mandatory, right? Subscription name, resource group name. Now we need to give the workspace name, workspace. Workspace means, so we multiple team members and multiple teams, they are going to work under this place, right? This place. So un under the Azure Databricks workspace, data engineering team, data science team, data analyst team, multiple team members are work together, right? work together that way we can call it as a workspace workspace means multiple team members are uh, working together okay okay let me give the uh, workspace name test sample workspace okay again it's asking region is to yes pricing tire let me select the free train let me select the free train okay now now manage a resource group Test sample group. Test sample group. Okay, guys, remember here to we have resource group and manager resource group name. Right? So if you click on and if you if you if you click on review create, right, you can able to see one more resource group name is called test sample group. Already we have test RG. Already we have test RG. Right? Test RG. So whatever we are creating the resources like um, resource group name, Azure Data Factory, Azure Data Bricks, Keyword Storage Account, right? We are just selecting the ex existing resource group under test archive. Those resources are, are under uh, in test archive, right? But but at, at the time of creating the Azure Data Bricks, it having some, some sub components. Azure Data Bricks workspace having the some internal sub components, maybe internal uh, storage accounts, internal res other resources. Those are internal resources which is related to Azure Databricks workspace. Those are comes under test sample group. Those are comes under test sample group. Right? High level resources are comes under test RG. Internal resources are comes under managed resource group name. Right? High level, whatever we are creating, high level resource like keyword, storage account, data factory, Databricks resource group, VNet. Those resources are comes under test RG resource group. But so whatever we are creating the Azure Databricks workspace, internal resources, internal resources means automatically some internal storages, internal resources will be created for the Azure Databricks workspace. Those resources are internal resources are comes under managed resource group, managed resource group. Okay, right. Let me click on the networking. As of now, I'm not going to select this VNet uh, IPS and all. Let me uh, keep it uh, things as it is. Let me go for the encryption. I'm not going to do anything in this place. Tags. Next, finally, review create. Finally, review create. Earlier, before Azure Databricks workspace, we have um, another concept is there to take care of the batch processing data. We have two types of data which is available in the market. One is the batch processing data and real-time processing data. Batch processing data, real-time processing data. Then, okay. Batch processing. So before that, what is data? Anyone? What is data? What is data? What is big data? How this big data is generated? Anyone knows? What is data? What is big data? How is it generated? Okay. Data means, for example, we are sending a message to uh, one person to another person, right? We are sending a message to 
one person to another person. Maybe WhatsApp messages or text messages, right? That is also data, right? For example, if you are trying to upload the videos in YouTube, that is also data. If you are trying to post uh, some uh, image or video, something page into your Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter, that is also data. That is also data. Then what is the big data? Okay, right. In real time, in real time, we have n number of sources, n number of destinations, right? Sources may be Azure SQL file system, right? Cosmos DB, MongoDB, right? Cassandra, Kafka, event hubs, IoT devices, anything, anything, or applications, or uh, social media uh, sites like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, right? Those are public domains. Or as applications, Amazon based applications and uh, Flipkart based applications, right? These are all the generating the data. In real time, we are going to extract the data from the different sources, different sources, right? Sources means applications, Flipkart or uh, Amazon based applications, or as YouTube or Facebook, right? Or Twitter, right? These things are, right, going to generate the data. We need to get the data from the various source to extract the data systematically, right? We are going to extract the data systematically from the different sources, from the different sources, right? While generating the data from the different sources, definitely it having the uh, uh, raw data, right? It having the dump of data, right? It having good data as well as uh, bad data. Right? right, for example, source having the 100, 100 uh, tables, or a source having the 100 files, 100 files, right? Client want only 20 files, they don't want 80 files, right? Right, client want only 20 wanted data, they don't want uh, unwanted data. Here, we are going to avoid the unwanted data, we are going to get the only wanted data wanted data so whatever wanted data they want we need to analyze the data right out of 100 100 files we need to analyze the data right we need to analyze the data right we are going to get the exact data and we are going to avoid the unwanted data right we are going to extract the exact data for business need or client need right right here we need to analyze the data which is actually useful for business or client need. Right? Right? Here we need to analyze the data which is actually useful for business or client need. Client need. Right? So big data means those sources are keep on generating the data. If you see the YouTube or live news channel data or any scientific data or any transactions data Right? or any social media data, or sensor data, or public data, right? Those are comes under big data. Those are comes under big data concepts. They are they, Those things are keep on generating the data. Keep on generating the data. We have different types of domains available in the market, like um, healthcare domain, banking domain, right? Insurance domain, right? We have different types of domains available in the market. Every domain, every domain, right? It's generating the big data, big data, right? If you see the YouTube live stream, it's generating the data. New channels, generating the data, live data, right? Social media, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, generating the data, right? Scientific data, just keep on generating the data. Transaction data, for example, if you are trying to send the money from one account to another account, one account to another account. You are you are able to get the uh, uh, messages, right? Once the transaction is successful, or if you are able to get the OTP, right? If, before uh, sending the money to sender to receiver, right? Banking is going to identify it right, whether uh, uh, you are the correct person or not. For this, um, we, we are we are getting the OTPs, right? For email or uh, mobile number, right? So this data is keep on generating. We are able to get the alerts immediately. Alerts immediately. For example, if there is any uh, 
a misuse transaction automatically we are able uh, we are uh, get the call from the customer care right respective banks right those are comes under big data those are comes under big data okay there are two types of data available in the market two types of data available in the market okay right while dealing with this data while while sorry while dealing with this data there are two types of uh, things we need to follow one is batch processing data and real time processing data batch processing data and real time processing data batch processing means historical data for example if you open net banking if you open net banking right so maybe if you joined a company if you joined a company right due to background verification uh, maybe they are asking to uh, give the yeah, please try to uh, give the uh, last five years uh, historical data historical data right we are going to uh, give the historical data right for last five years right those are comes under batch processing data batch processing data real time data processing means it is keep on generating keep on generating means if you go to the atm and uh, if you try to get the money from the atm right you are able to get the otp immediately if you if you are trying to do the transaction from so one account to another account right you are able to get the messages immediately Trans transaction is completed successfully right immediately right those are comes into the real time processing data real time processing data okay let me go to resources once the workspace is created successfully, scroll down, there is the option called the launch workspace. Click on this launch workspace. No worries, guys. I will give this uh, notes. As of now, we are discussing, right? So I have already notes. I will share these notes. Okay. Right. Database. I know if I open PPT, especially at morning time, definitely you feel sleepy. That's why uh, here I am not opening the PPT sender. Okay, right. Now we uh, now I am in database. Now I am in database. Right. Here we have multiple options. Here we have multiple options. Workspace, recent catalog, workflow, compute, SQL editor, queries, dashboards, alerts. Right. Before discussing all these things, let me open the PPT. Okay. Right. We already discussed about this uh, big data, right? While handling with big data, uh, there are three things uh, important, right? So we can call it as three Vs, Vs, three Vs. One for value, one for velocity, one for variety, variety, right? Right. Value means, value means it is going to provide the amount of data, provide the amount of data, maybe terabytes or tables or records, right? A transaction or petabyte something value means data it's going to provide the amount of data right right we are going to handle the terabyte of data or petabyte of data or records or tables or transactions right those are comes under the value part value part next velocity velocity means it's provide the time it's provide the time at which the data is collected and analyzed velocity means time we are going to uh, handle the data based upon the time, right? Time, either it is a near time or a stream time, or is there any uh, uh, difference time? We need to think about the time at the time of velocity. Velocity value means we are going to deal with the data, whether it is a terabyte data or petabyte data. Velocity means time, time. Okay. Next, data variety. Data variety means. Here we have the different types of data like structured data, or unstructured data, semi-structured data, right? Big data is generating, right? We need to know what is the uh, data size, right? What time we are going to uh, move the data from one place to another place, the time. And finally, what format, whether it is the same structured format or semi-structured format, either Excel or JSON, we need to know, right? These three things, we need to follow at the time of handling the big data from source to destination. Source to destination. Okay, right. 
next azure database right azure database this is the azure database azure database okay so earlier 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 we have a hadoop concept right earlier we have a hadoop concept hadoop concept mainly designed for to handle the batch processing data hadoop concept mainly designed for batch processing data batch processing data means historical data batch processing means historical data right for example we are we already discussed one example right if we try to get the historical data from last uh, one month or last one year or last five years those things are come comes under historical data historical data how do mainly designed for historical data not for real time data right spark mainly spark mainly designed for real time processing data as well as historical data spark is going to deal with two types of data historical data as well as the real time streaming data real time streaming data hadoop uh, designed with delphi of java right and uh, azure databricks designed based upon this spark spark okay right in hadoop in hadoop uh, there is a uh, internal memory storage in hadoop having the internal memory storage the storage name is called hdfs right hadoop file system hadoop file system even azure databricks also spark also having the internal storage that is dbfs 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 means databricks file system databricks file system i will show you right i will show you okay next while dealing with the data in hadoop while dealing with the data in hadoop we need to depends upon the disk we need to depends upon the disk obviously obviously in the databricks here we are uh, going to create the clusters right clusters right cluster means group of virtual machines group of, group of virtual machines because why we are going to create the cluster because when we are handling the workload huge amount of workload whether it is historical data or real time processing data right we need a heavy machines right heavy machines single machines it is not uh, suitable for uh, handling this uh, huge amount of workloads right for this reason for this reason we are going to create the cluster we are going to create the cluster cluster means group of servers group of virtual machines group of nodes right group of machines group of nodes group of servers even hadoop also we are going to create the cluster spark also we are going to create the cluster when we are trying to handle the historical data or real time data we need to create the cluster first we need to create the cluster first cluster means group of servers or nodes or virtual machines right okay right for example hadoop is mainly designed for historical data right every server having the disk right right here disk 1 disk 2 disk 3 disk 4 disk 5 here i have disk 5 disk 5 right for example i have historical data i have historical data i am trying to move the data i am trying to move data with the help of hadoop concept while moving the data from the hadoop concept the data is moving uh, through disk through disk disk 1 disk 2 disk 3 disk 4 disk 5 right in case in case while moving the data from through disk for example we have five suddenly in a disk 3 there is a problem there is a problem there is a problem until this disk uh, uh, if there is an issue with the disk 3 Uh, we need to fix that issue right until we have to wait right for moving the data from source to destination we need to wait maybe some situation data is going to lost or or else we need to wait until uh, this disk is up right this type of problems which is available in hadoop while moving the data from one disk to another disk definitely there is a time latency right definitely there is a latency issues while accessing the data for moving the data from source to destination definitely there is a latency latency means time taking process latency means time taking process while moving the data from one disk to another it is it will take some time moving the data definitely will face latency issues latency issue if some situation any uh, disk uh, is going to down we need to wait until the disk is up we need to fix that disk issue right but in spark but in spark 
we are not going to depend upon this disk center disks we have only one disk right we have only one dedicated disk right we are going to move the data through cache level cache level not disk level cache level right spark uh, mainly designed for in in memory uh, point of view in memory means we are moving the data through cache level not disk level not cache uh, disk level through cache level anyone know about the cache what is the meaning of the cache anyone others cache general meaning of cache to store the base of data like mem okay anyone uh, seen about this uh, uh, chrome cache did you did you get a chance to clear your cache in the browser the previous data previous historical data right 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 cache means cache means simply simply si simply whatever for example if you open any uh, uh, google google here if you open any settings settings right settings history so there is a option called to clear the cache so whatever we are browsing the data right those things are which is comes under history place history place right okay for example for example uh let me tell you the meaning of the cache uh cache means uh, we can access data very quickly right the data while storing the data while retrieving the data it is going to store on uh, uh, one one place one place uh, it is not going to take uh, uh, for uh, it's not going to take uh, um, more than size it's very less very less we can access easily we can access very easily and we can move the data from one uh, one cache to another cache is very easily and very fast very fast okay cache is very uh, less size very less size okay we can move the data from one cache to another cache it's uh, very fast there is no latency issues here right spark is mainly designed for in memory process in memory process means the data which uh, which will uh, we can move with the help of cache level only right here we are following the cache level mechanism cache level mechanism okay the size is very less right we can move the data from one place to another place one place to another place okay and there is no uh, a chance to lose the our cache data because cache means whatever we are browsing the data right those are those things are already captured there into cache cache immediately uh, we can able to uh, recover those things in uh, immediately fraction of seconds of probably with less than minutes we are going to re uh, recollect the information here right such type of things designed for especially for spark only spark so at the time of handling the real time data right we need to Uh, provide the resolution immediately, immediately. For this reason, Sparkly mainly designed for cache level data, cache level data. So we are going to give the, uh, we are going to move the data from immediately within less than minutes, less than seconds, right? We are going to give the data, uh, fraction of seconds or uh, less than minutes something, right? Spark is mainly des designed for real time streaming data, real time streaming data. Okay, right. next next azure database azure database earlier we have hadoop concept hadoop concept right so there is a uh, drawbacks uh, uh, which is available in the hadoop hadoop right so that's why in the market they are introducing the concept is called azure database databricks 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 mainly designed for handling the structured data and unstructured data right with the help of spark with the help of spark right databricks sorry hadoop uh, following the map reduce concept in the back end hadoop uh, following the map reduce concept databricks back end follow the spark based process 
Spark based process. Okay, right. It is Databricks mainly designed to handle the large volume of data, large volume of data, huge amount of data, right? Huge amount of data, right? There are different types of advantages available for this Azure Databricks. Guys, right? those are like um, unified analytics platform, right? Unified analytics platform. The meaning is, for example, for example, uh, now we are able to successfully create the Databricks, right? Where it is, where it is, yes. Now we are able to successfully create the Databricks, Databricks, right? Once, uh, once the cluster created successfully in real time, we are going to work with the multiple team members, multiple team members, means data engineering team, data science team, machine learning team, machine learning team, okay? Right? So it, so Azure Databricks, it provides a platform to work with multiple teams like a data engineering team, data science team, machine learning team. All team members are work in a, work in one project in a single environment. In a single environment. Okay. That is the meaning of unified analytic platform. Multiple team members are work together. Multiple team members are work together. Next, Apache Spark integration. Apache Spark integration. For example, for example, right? Uh, Apache Spark mainly designed for to handle the real-time streaming data, right? Real-time streaming data, right? It supports multiple uh, things like uh, if you want to handle the data, you can handle it. You can write the SQL queries. You can uh, uh, do some batch processing. Everything we can do under the Databricks. Databricks. And also it having important uh, main components, workspace, catalog, workflow, compute. Right, these are all the main things. Workspace means, right? Workspace means multiple team members are work together. Right? Here, here we are writing the here we are here we are writing the notebooks, notebooks, right? Notebooks. So data engineering team write the notebooks. Data science team uh, writing the notebooks. Data analyst team writing the notebooks. Right? Notebooks. Okay. Here we are creating the clusters, creating the notebooks, create the jobs. Right, handling the data, right, generate the data, right. We are going to hmm, share our notebooks to one team member to another team member, right. Execute the code, right. We can generate the visualization, right. We can generate the Power BI reports here, right. We can create the notebooks, share the notebooks one one, one other team member to another team member. We can uh, uh, maintain the notebooks into repositories. There are multiple options available under the workspace under the workspace, right? If you click on this workspace, we have two options, share and user. Users means once if you are in a project, so you can able to see all, uh, all your project members details in user spot, your team members uh, usernames, you can able to see here, you can able to see here, right? For example, you, de you developed one notebook, you developed one notebook based upon client demand, just there is a requirement to extract the data from source, just read the data, from the ADL agent and the right data into Synapse, right? Just you created one notebook and that notebook is completed. That notebook is completed, right? Someone uh, uh, has asked me to ping before going to the repository, please try to share that notebook into shared part, right? You just, you can move that notebook into shared part so that everyone, every team member can able to see that notebook into under shared part, under shared part. This is the, uh, one of the frequent uh, uh, thing uh, which we are doing every day, right? We are we are sharing our notebooks into other team members, right? If you want to, we can also share those notebooks into repository. But maybe some situation, right? If if we move the uh, uh, local um, uh, notebook into repositories, definitely we need to do, do some testing, right? Local testing. Right, whether it's working properly or not, if there is an issue, something right, right, for uh, reviewing, reviewing the notebooks. Okay, before moving the notebooks into repositories, if you want to share that notebooks into some other person, you can share that notebooks. Or else, if you have existing notebook, if you want to move that notebook into some other one, some other person, you can share that notebook. 
in real time you can able to see multiple uh, notebooks uh, under the shared path shared path okay right obviously in real time we in real time we, you can able to see the clusters clusters right job clusters uh, all purpose clusters and job clusters all purpose cluster job clusters okay right clusters we, we are going to manage the cluster we are going to uh, collaborate and sharing our notebooks work and we, we, are, we are able to manage the cluster means uh, we are able to create the notebooks right sometimes cluster is going to turn right it's going to terminate more not terminate more we need to review the logs and uh, we need to do the some root cause analysis for that one and try to finish uh, try to resolve this uh, issue center okay right here we are performing the job clusters and we here we need to create the uh, development related clusters okay next next data integration obviously obviously so we have the uh, data which is available in different places right sources right we are going to uh, read the data read the data for this we need to create the mount point we can store the sensitive information into keyword and just read the data and the write the data we can integrate the data okay right next to even even azure data bricks we can integrate in with the multiple azure services like uh, for example if your data which is available in storage or if your data available in azure sql if you want to get the data sql data or da storage account data into our data bricks simply we can create the mount point we can read the data and the write the data into destination destination right we can easily integrate in with the other services like key vault or adl agent or blob storage or azure sql right any type of azure services we can easily integrate integrate next and security com compliance means for example if you have any sensitive information for any azure service no worries we can store that sensitive information into the key vault and even even for example if you want to access your azure uh, you have a data you have a tables right in azure sql having the table if you want to access azure sql data into the data bricks so there is a firewall option which is available we can uh, enable this firewall so that we can restrict the uh, firewall related issues right firewall related issues next scalability scalability means for example uh, all purpose compute means it is uh, this cluster must and should be run on 24 by 7 let me create one cluster let me create one cluster here scroll down right here i am able to see the minimum workers to maximum workers eight minimum workers to maximum workers eight there is option called enable auto scale there is option called enable auto scale auto scaling means for example for example every mission right even if it, if it is a linux or a windows every mission having some capability to handle the workload right to handle the workload for example for example i have a windows server i have windows server right uh, for example if uh, traffic is keep on uh, hitting to my application or traffic is keep on hitting to my cluster cluster right right cluster in case if the traffic is reaching more than 80 percentage to the um, server automatically my server is going to down right so for that for avoiding that type, uh, that type of uh, issues right here we are um, uh, enable the auto scaling option enable the auto scaling options means so here uh, we are metering the minimum workers to maximum workers eight eight right minimum two servers maximum eight so eight servers okay based upon the workload demand right back end uh, these missions are is going to handle for example right for example in today the date is 10th 10th at 8 at 8 8 8, 8 a.m um, thousand uh, people are accessing my application right thousand means uh, it is very less right so one or two servers is fine for to handle the data suddenly on 10 am lakhs of persons accessing the uh, my application right for handling that type of workload again i need more uh, uh, two more uh, or three more uh, servers right on 11 am uh, 5 lakhs people are trying to access my application right on that time i need eight servers i need eight servers 
like the way we can art, enable the auto scaling option automatically server will be created minimum to maximum to maximum to so based upon so your uh, business need or client need you need to decide for the maximum workers you need to decide maximum workers right whether you want 16 right whether you want 20 so based upon your client bandwidth bandwidth you need to decide right you we need to decide maximum workers maximum workers. okay for example there is no bandwidth there is no bandwidth right there is no bandwidth there is a simple data or a, it is a very simple application very less uh, users are trying to access your application or very less um, traffic is hit to your cluster cluster right for example i have real uh, youtube streaming data the youtube is keep on generating the data right so i am going to handle those type of data into my azure databricks cluster this cluster right it is a simple it is a simple youtube streaming data okay so those type of workloads and all so minimum workers to maximum workers is fine eight fine right suddenly suddenly uh, or else uh, if there is a um, iot device data or any sensor data or scientific data right 24 by new channel data for if you specify the maximum workers eight is not enough so we need to decide based upon the business need right based upon the business need we need to decide okay right any questions as of now others at least yes or no no shaman thank you right okay thanks Okay, okay, right. Batch processing, real time processing already we discussed. And uh, next, okay, let me explain this example. Okay, right. Okay, here, here, in in this picture, uh, uh, we have a Hadoop and Spark. In the top, you can able to see the Hadoop. In the down, you can able to see the Spark. Spark. Hadoop is mainly designed for to handle the big data processing. Sorry, uh, batch processing data. Means historical data. Definitely while handling with the historical data with the help of Hadoop, there is a time lag. There is a time lag. Right? Hadoop um, mainly designed for to handle the Historical data with the help of MapReduce concept, Hadoop is working. Hadoop is working, right? For example, right now uh, we have a data. We have a day one data. We have a day, day one data. In the Hadoop, there is no concept to access the day one data into day one. For example, today date, today date, right? Today date. I want to get the today data. There is no concept in the Hadoop to get the today data. Today data, right? You have to wait until 24 hours, right? Now, now, day one data is pro, uh, generating successfully. Now again, day two data generating. Day two data generating, right? Day two day, data is generating, right? Day two data is generating. We are going to get the, uh, now we are in day two. Now we are in day two. We are going to get the day one data, not day two data. Because there is a timeline. Timeline. Now we are in day three. Now we are in day three. Right? So if you are in day three, you are able to get the day two data and day one data. Not current data. Not day, day three data. Like the way we have timeline. Right? Timeline. Definitely there is a timeline. Maybe 24 hours. 24 hours. You have to wait until 24 hours to get the data. Data. Yesterday data. Right? But but in Spark, in Spark, we are able to handle the mainly it is designed for real-time processing data. 
real time processing data there is no time lag there is no time lag right so whatever the time lag uh, issues available in the hadoop those those issues come uh, fixes under spark there is no time lag under the spark right spark is mainly designed for real time processing data hadoop is mainly designed for historical data means batch processing data batch processing data right with delphi map reduce concept hadoop is working right so in apache spark on a, apache in a azure data bricks works based on the spark spark okay right right so in the spark we can able to get the day one data into today data only. day to data today data only. right for example i want to get the 6 am data yes is possible in spark i want to get this 6:30 am data yes in spark it is possible right there is no time lag there is no time lag okay right okay right let me uh, explain the cluster let me explain the cluster when you are trying to create the cluster there are multiple options available there are multiple options available see see here here if you want to go for multi node you can just select as a minimum minimum workers to maximum workers eight maximum workers eight for example uh, there is a my source um, it is a simple data it is a simple data there is a file system data maybe there is a csv files or a text files available in my uh, on prem virtual machine there is a simple csv file it is less than 1 gb right it is less than 1 gb daily uh, uh, on source side daily uh, they are generating some mb sub data or uh, 5 mg of data 10 10 10 mg of data right source side they are generating it's a simple data simple data on that time scenarios so we we, we are not going to uh, create the multiple nodes because it's very less uh, data right less data right so better you can go and select the single node single node single node okay single node single node means only one node created means only one server is going to create it this cluster having the only one server this cluster having the only one server only one server server means we have the windows server Windows server same look like our laptop, our desktop, right? Let me select the multi node, right? If I select the multi node, right, I am able to see the minimum workers to maximum workers. Here it's showing as two to summary. Whatever we are selecting those details, those details is this comes under in the summary part. Summary part. Here summary, I am able to see the two to eight workers, right? Two to every server, every mission. definitely having some configuration right ram hard disk processor i3 processor ip processor right 8 gb 16 gb 500 uh, gb or 1 tb 2 tb like the way it having configurations right workers means servers or nodes or vms or virtual machines all are same meaning all are same meaning okay here here the missions configurations are 22 122 gb memory 82 32 cores 82 to 32 cores right while creating the missions worker type worker means server or mission right right every every server having some configurations every server having the some configuration right deep we have the different types of series is available for every server having separate series ds3 series ds4 series ds5 we can ds4 like the way we have different types of series available these series are normal general purpose we can able to select we can able to select if you scroll down if you scroll down see we have 46 more still uh, general purpose options available right based upon your demand based upon your poc based upon your client demand right workload demand you need to decide the this worker right everything this options before uh, a project so we have a dedicated document 
that is migration strategy document or a deployment design document or requirement gathering document that document contain each and everything cluster size right versions runtime versions right minimum workers maximum workers right data factory right adl is gen to keywords okay everything everything the way of selection the way of, the way of data movementing and source and destination data everything naming conventions everything will be there into that document that document i will show you that document tomorrow or else stay up to tomorrow okay right we have n number of options right based upon your need client need based upon client cost client based uh, workload based upon the workload so so we need to decide we need to decide uh, which uh, uh, which driver type is suitable for to handle that work 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 uh, uh, data right we have the hdd those are all uh, things are related to hard disk level also hard disk also memory optimization remote hdd memory optimization storage optimization compute optimization Right? There are m number of options available here. Here now, just this is a default one, fourteen GB memory and four cores. This is the basic one. This is the basic one. If you want to go for higher, you can select higher. Right? If I select twenty eight GB memory and eight cores, right? Scroll down, scroll up. Now we are able to see twenty eight GB eight cores, eight cores. Okay. Let me select the basic one. Okay. Now, 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 uh, we have uh, one more option called enable auto scaling. Enable auto scaling means automatically emissions will be created. Automatically emission decreases based upon our workload. Based upon our workload. Next, there is an option called terminate after one twenty minutes of inactivity. For example, for example. This cluster is going to run on twenty four by seven, right? It is a development related cluster. It must and should be run on twenty four by seven. Twenty four by seven. For gen for for running twenty four by seven, right? Definitely, client uh, is going to pay the amount right for Azure, right? For example, for example, uh, you are working on a project. You are working on a project. Okay. For example. You uh, you are the only one member in there in that project. You are the only one member or two members are there in project. One member in offshore, one member in onsite. Onsite. So onshore offsite timings are different, right? For example, if you are working, if you are working on a offshore, offshore. Okay, right. So there is a uh, client uh, facing some cost related issues, right? You are handling simple workloads, simple workloads. For handling the simple workloads, so we need to think about the client cost as well. Client cost as well. Here, just we selected a single. Let me select the single node and scroll down. No, right. Let me select the multi. Multi. For example, uh, my minimum workers is two, maximum workers is four. Right here, we are handling normal simple data. Normal simple data. Normal simple data. Okay. Okay, right. So I went to break, right? I went to break or two hours or three hours or four hours something, four hours or two hours or three hours something, right? Even if you take the break, right? This cluster is keep on running, right? But there is no data movement from source to destination. There is no data movement from source to destination. So very rarely, very rarely, we are moving the data from source to destination. Right, there is a one dedicated job is going to run on on specific time, right? Daily two times or three times. There is a dedicated job is going to run for moving the data from source to destination, source to destination. But I uh, I just take the break. Yes, I just take the break for lunch or something, right? Or team lunch something, right? But cluster is keep on running, right? While running the cluster, definitely. Uh, it's generating the amount, right? Azure is going to generating the cost to the client, right? Client unnecessarily going to pay the amount to this uh, Microsoft Azure portal. 
Microsoft Azure portal, right? For avoiding those type of uh, things and all, you can just terminate your cluster based upon your uh, uh, inactivity. For example, if I specify the 30 minutes, 30 minutes or uh, uh, 30 minutes, let me uh, select the 30 minutes. I went to break, I went to break, right? I went to break, right? Before going to break, definitely you guys are going to uh, uh, shut down the missions or something, or you just minimize the mission, right? Right, you are you are going to just keep it as sleep mode, right? Your uh, laptop, but your cluster is back and keep on running. Your cluster is keep on running back and you are you are just uh, went to something team lunch or uh, break, right? So if you specify the thirty minutes means if you are if, if there is no activity within the, this thirty minutes, automatically it's it's going to terminate. Automatically it is going to terminate mode. It's automatically it's going to terminate mode. Terminate. Okay. So you need to, again, you need to, for example, after one hour or two hours, again, you are back to your office and just you are opening the laptop. Now we are able to see as cluster as terminate mode. Terminate mode because you just mentioned as 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Right. Again, you restart the cluster. Again, you restart the cluster. It will take some time less than a minute to uh, cluster up. Right. For, for uh, those type of scenarios, you just enable the, you just mention your uh, terminate uh, inactivity, inactivity. For example, if I specify 30 minutes, if I specify the 30 minutes, right? Right? So we have a dedicated team. We have a dedicated team, onshore and offshore. Onshore and offshore. Onsite and offshore. Offshore, we have uh, four members. Onsite, we have uh, four members. Right? Four members. Right, every member uh, is doing uh, his own work. Right, keep on they are doing some development activity, something. Right, and that times there is no inactivity mode from this cluster. There is no inactivity mode from this cluster. Right, keep on we are doing some activity in that cluster. Right, for uh, writing the notebooks, or run the cells. Right, share the notebooks. Right, push the notebooks into repositories. Right, creating the branches, push that pipelines, uh, jobs is uh, running, keep on running, right? Okay. If there is no activity in this uh, cluster under this uh, uh, time interval, right, automatically this cluster is going to terminate. Terminate. Okay, right. Now, now whatever we are selecting uh, these options, we are able to see the summary part. We are able to see the summary part. Summary part. Okay. All right. Okay. So we have we have worker type, worker type, and a driver type. We have worker type and driver type. Driver type. This is our cluster. This is our cluster. Okay. All right. These are all the main important uh, components available while creating the cluster. Right, these are all the main component components available in the cluster. Cluster. Okay, let me open one paint. We'll discuss about the architecture, Spark architecture, for this uh, worker node, driver, program, cluster manager. Right. I have a driver program. So just now we seen right driver, driver. driver program and uh, let me draw this architecture we have the cluster manager it is one of the frequent interview question also cluster manager for spark architecture and we have the worker modes Minimum workers two, maximum workers eight. Let me 
select the minimum workers too. Okay. Okay. Worker mode one. Worker node. Okay, right, right. Okay. So, while creating the cluster, we have these options, right? Worker type and a driver program. And this is our cluster manager. We are going to create the cluster. So, cluster is, is cluster manager. We have the worker type and a driver type. Worker type means obviously missions. Obviously missions, servers. Right? Servers. For example, I have uh, my, my cluster created successfully. My, cre my cluster created successfully in the notebook. So based upon the business demand, I just uh, return the Spark code. I just return the Spark code. Maybe the logic is 1 plus 1, 1 minus 1, 2 into 2, right? And uh, 2 plus 2. This is, uh, this is uh, my business logic. I have just written one logic. Consider I have just written one business logic. One business logic. Okay. Right. If you see in real time, normally manager responsibilities is going to get the projects from the client. Right. Get the project from the client and is going to uh, give the project to the our uh, leads. Right. Lead is going to divide the work and assign the work into developers developers here you can uh, uh, you can uh, uh, driver program uh, maybe you can call it as a manager 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 okay manager and cluster manager is lead our lead team our team right worker node means developer developer just for understanding purpose, developer. Okay, right, right. Here, 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 whatever we are submitting the business logic, whatever we are writing the code, so we are just uh, submit the code into Spark. Spark. So this driver program is going to give this, whatever we are developing this business logic, right? Whatever we are uh, written this business logic, this driver program, uh, assign this work to cluster manager. Cluster manager. Alright. Cluster manager is going to divide the work to the worker nodes. Worker node. For example, he is going to give the first work to like uh, even even uh, okay. For example, team lead is going to divide the work like um, one plus one. Is give the uh, one plus one task to this developer, and team lead again is going to give the another uh, task to worker two means uh, another developer. Maybe that is one minus one. One minus one again is going to give one more task to the developer one means worker node two into two, two into two. Again is going to give the one more task to worker node right 2 plus 2 2 plus 2 right team lead means cluster manager is going to divide the divide the work into the multiple worker nodes multiple worker nodes based upon the node capability node capability right based upon the node capability keep on cluster manager giving the work uh, submit the work to workers Submit the works to workers. Worker notes responsibility to take care of this code and execute the code. To execute the code. Execute the code. Okay. For example, if if some situation, if some situation, uh, there is an issue with this worker node. There is an issue with this worker node. Okay. Suddenly, this worker node is going to down. Suddenly, worker node is going to down. Based on some CP utilization, some... Uh, other uh, things and that, right? Automatically, automatically, Spark is going to take the responsibility of 
to create the another worker node here another worker node here same to same worker node whatever this worker node having the configurations ram hard disk everything it have right same configurations uh, things here uh, here also there and um, one more worker node will be created but instead of worker node will be created definitely there is a time right it will take some time to create maybe two minutes or three minutes or five minutes in between in between cluster manager cluster manager keep on assign the work into available healthy worker nodes available healthy worker nodes as of now for example purpose just i have taken two worker nodes but real time we have n number of worker nodes for example here we have 10 worker nodes consider i have it and worker nodes first worker node is going to down some such some uh, some specific reason right due to cp utilization or some other reason first worker node is going to down first worker node is going to down still we have nine worker nodes right still we have nine worker nodes cluster man keep cluster manager keep on submit then submit the work into remaining nine worker nodes in between in between in between spark is going to create the back end another worker node another worker node it will take some time to up maybe 2 minutes or 5 minutes or 10 minutes right in between cluster manager submit the code into remaining nine worker nodes right cluster manager is not going to submit the code into worker 1 node 1 because it it, it is uh, it is down right it is down it is not healthy it is unhealthy it is going to identify okay this worker node is not healthy it is unhealthy there is a problem with worker node so it is going to detect the this node and next time onwards cluster manager is not sending this work to worker node 1 until another worker node uh, created right it will take some time to create the worker node after new node is created successfully now it is healthy mode right so cluster manager is going to detect the yes there is a one more healthy node will be created now it's time to pass the uh, data to worker node 1 like the way it will happen in back end back end. right one more thing every worker node having executors every node having the executors this executor is going to take the responsibility of to do the work to do the work right to do the work okay so every server sir every window server you can call it as worker node means every server every server having the executors 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 is the responsible for to uh, submit the task right executors having the task right worker node having the executors let me add those things here right each worker node having the executors executor 1 executor 2 like the way we have executor 1 and executor 2 we have multiple executors but due to this page constraint just i have added two things only executor i will come up with another uh, google uh, image for tomorrow let me explain more executor executor right each executors having the task each executors having task like task right worker node having the executors executor having the task right executor is responsible to do the task task having the whatever we are uh, cluster manager submit the code right that code that business logic having the task this task is going to complete the tasks right task. okay any questions so far Yeah, Harish Ravan. Yes, please. So you said that cluster manager to use uh, send to data for the worker node one, right? One worker node is unhealthy. So the second one is automatically the creator the uh, system, or we need to do clear the manually for the help. We are not going to create manually. Automatically, Spark is going to identify the worker node. If there is an issue with the worker node, it is going to identify yes, there is an issue with this worker node. 
it is going to identify this node is as un unhealthy. Instead of that node is going to create the uh, one healthy node. This concept uh, is uh, we can uh, fault tolerance. We can uh, call it as this concept name is called fault tolerance. This is the one of the advantages available in Spark. Fault tolerance. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Others, any questions?